If you're using the Go High Level platform and you're not quite sure how to use the survey builder or maybe what to use them for to improve results within your marketing and sales systems, this video is for you. I'm gonna walk you through how to create a custom survey, the do's, the don'ts, the ins, the outs, the nuances, and the things to consider when you are building and utilizing these custom surveys. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button or subscribe, comment if you have any questions, and make sure to check out my high level tutorials playlist for more high level tutorials just like this one. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna walk you through creating a custom survey, talk to you a little bit about some of the options, and then as you can see, we've got analyze. This will be analyzing what's been happening from the survey and the submissions so that you can review the responses, download them, etc. So we are gonna start on the builder tab and click on create new survey. So surveys are based on slides. So we see slide one and then this add new slide button below. We also see a high level logo. So we'll talk about that. The first thing I'm gonna do is go to options and I'm gonna change the name of this. This will be what new hairstyle is right for you. So I'm just making this up as I go. On submit, this means what happens when they submit this survey? We can either send them to a URL, which ideally would be a thank you page that's telling them, hey, if this hairstyle is right for you, I've got the perfect offer, get a free cut with your first color, go ahead and book on our calendar. So as soon as someone submits something like this, you really wanna give them the ideal next step, which should be your offer, booking an appointment, scheduling a call, or making a purchase even. So that's what you wanna keep in mind for that on submit. I really avoid using a thank you message. It doesn't do a good job of getting them to that next step, which should be your goal. So you could do open URL. You can also decide what URL or what page this survey goes to when you embed this survey onto one of your funnel pages. So there is a survey element in the funnel builder. All you have to do is select that. It's gonna give you a drop down of all your surveys. You select the survey you wanna add into the page and there it will be. So you'll have some options to either go to the next step of the funnel or to go to a URL or to use the survey next step options, which is gonna be based on this field right here. So then we've got disqualify immediately. That is going to be used for any disqualifying questions. In this specific survey, what's the best hair type for you? I don't know that there would be, but this is definitely something that you want if there is a disqualifier, a hard disqualifier for leads for your business potentially or for whatever the purpose of the survey is. I would be conscious about not disqualifying people that it may not be a hard disqualifier um, and that there may be something that needs to be discussed before you actually know if they're a good fit. So again, totally depends on the purpose of the survey, but that's what you would be able to do with the disqualify immediately option. You can also do a disqualify after submit. So you're still gonna collect that survey information, but for whatever reason, you don't wanna take them to that same next steps page that you might be sending someone else. You wanna say, thanks so much for submitting the survey. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like you're a good fit at this time for our services. Um, if you think this was a mistake, you can reach out to us here. Otherwise, you know, we'll keep your information for the future if we need it. So that's kind of the verbiage you might wanna have on a disqualify after submit page. Pixel ID, this is optional right here. You could also have that on your funnel page in which you don't need it on the survey itself. And the conversions API survey submission, that's really what we're relying on these days to track our survey submissions. Tell Facebook, hey, we got a survey submission in case anyone came from an ad, um, and really just make sure that that data is accurate on your pixel. But we can also say Facebook pixel events on page view. It's a page view. And on form submission, it might be submit application or it could be complete registration or lead, something that makes sense based on the purpose of this survey. We also have survey field settings, one question at a time. So what that's gonna do is it's not gonna have a lot of slides, it's just only gonna pull up one question at a time on here. That does limit some of the options you have. I usually don't do that because you can put one single question on one slide send them to the next slide and you still are gonna be able to get the same result. That'll make a little bit more sense as we build the survey. 
You also have that sticky contact option. That means if they've already filled out any of the information you're asking for inside of any place through your high level system, um, or you just have their contact info inside of high level, whatever fields you have on file for them, it will autofill so they don't have to fill it out again. I usually like sticky contact turned on, but it's not required. Then do you want to give them a back button to maybe re-answer a question? Disable auto navigation. That is going to be, um, the survey is not going to automatically go to the next slide if it's turned on, which we're not, we're going to leave that off. Progress bar, that's going to kind of show them, you know, how many additional questions they have left. Disable animation, we're going to leave that off. I like the animation. And then scroll to the top, we don't need that either. So if you want a banner image on this survey, you can upload one there and say, I want a full width survey. So let's just take a look at how that is going to show up. We'll just pick one of these images that we've got. So we'll be able to see that when it's done. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Now we've got styles. So at the very bottom, if I scroll all the way down there, I see, that, see this agency branding tab. So when it says agency, what that really means is the agency level account. So not the sub account that we're in right now, but what is the branding for the agency level account, which is really just whoever set up the high level account, whatever they're basing that off of. We don't need that. We're just going to turn it off. This is actually going to be inserted on a page at least whenever it's used by me and how I suggest it is used. You can have a logo on that page and it doesn't have to be on that specific survey. So then we can also just go ahead and say, all right, we might want to have a background image for this. So we also have show label right there. If I remove this image, just going to go ahead and hit save. And then I'm going to navigate over to field. So we're actually going to start building this. And we've got standard fields under standard. This is going to be the information that high level offers by default for information for a lead or client. So I'm going to start with full name, phone number, email. If there's anything else that you need from somebody, you can ask for it there. So you can see that these two have asterisks on them. This one does not. So I can click on a field. The field title is going to be right here in black. The placeholder is what you see inside of that field. So you can change both of those. And then required is this box right here, which then gives it an asterisk. If your field needs a description, you can say, please fill out your full name. Obviously, this is not a field that people really need a description for, but if there's anything that needs a little context or, uh, you know, prompting someone or giving them a, a more thorough description of what you're looking for, that's how you can do it, by clicking on the field and editing that description. You can also use images there as well, which is nice. I'm going to click out of that. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then on phone, I usually like to say cell phone number just because I really want to make sure I get someone's cell phone because text message will be utilized in our campaigns. And then you could also say your best email address. So hopefully you get their best email address. Now I'm going to say add new slide. They're going to fill out this information and once they've completed the email address, they're going to go to the next slide. So if I go over to my fields again, I'm going to see custom fields on the right. I actually have the ability to create new custom fields right here and now. So you don't have to go back to settings and think about all the questions you might want to ask. You can do it in the moment when you're creating a form or a survey. So we are going to say, what services are you interested in? And this obviously isn't what's the best hairstyle for you. I'm just showing you with what we have inside the account. Then we're also going to see, have you had this service done before? Are you a new customer? 
How did you hear about us? And then on this one, I'm going to edit my field title that says, we ask that if you schedule an appointment, you agree to show up at your scheduled time or reschedule at least 24 hours in advance. Do you agree to this? I'm going to make this required. So then you can see that on the check boxes, I have something a little bit unique. The yes, it allows me to say, okay, do I want to send somebody to a unique slide based on how they answer? So if I wanted to do that, I could have a new slide I'm actually going to have two new slides, okay? So one of them, I might say, I'm so sorry if you can't agree to show up at the time you schedule. We're not going to be able to book you at this time. If that was a mistake, uh, hit the back button or feel free to call us, email us, text us here to book. So that could be one example. Another one could be the slide that says, you know, would you like to go ahead and schedule a date and time or something like that. So it's called conditional logic. It's based on how they answer. And so if I wanted to send people who say yes to slide number seven, but people who say no to slide number eight, then I'd click on this yes and I'd say, okay, if they answer yes, they go to slide number seven. If they answer no, they go to slide number eight. Or if they say they can't agree to that, I might just want to disqualify them immediately and say in my disqualify immediately message, we really appreciate your interest, but we are only looking to book clients who can agree to show up at their scheduled time. If things change, you know, give us a call back or or, or let us know. Um, disqualify after submit, you could do the same type of thing. So we could have this one go to a different slide and this one disqualify immediately. You can't really do that with anything that is just a single option answer can only do it for things like radio buttons or drop downs, check boxes, because otherwise there's no real way to automate where they go because people can type whatever they want. So if you do want to do something that's based on conditional logic, then I'd encourage you to just use a lot of drop downs and check boxes and things like that. So right here we've got, we're going to make that required. Are you a new customer? You know, yes, no, whatever. If you don't need conditional logic, you don't have to do anything there. How did you hear about us? Again, you could make this a drop down, so it'd be easier. But again, if it doesn't matter in terms of you don't need conditional logic for a question like that, you can use whatever is the best fit. And then I could just put in on this slide whatever it was that I wanted to do. So let's say I did text. I could do that there. These are the options that we have though. So we've got large text, numerical, so it's somebody entering number, a phone number obviously, monetary, like a dollar amount, checkbox, single options. So this is multiple choice where they can only select one answer. Multiple options is like multiple choice, but they can select more than one answer. Radio buttons, those are, you know, the little dots that they can click. Dates, text box, list file upload, which is really cool. You might even say, upload pictures of styles or designs that you're interested in so we can discuss it at your appointment or something like that. This is also really great for a lot of other aspects of business that you might want to utilize. This could be done for recruitment and hiring new potential stylists or employees and you want them to upload certain things so you can go over their resume. Signature, you can also, um, you know, utilize that signature field. So, text box list. This is really going to be a list, a label and a value. So these are all the options. You may not use a lot of these options. You may use all of the options. It really depends on what you're trying to collect. So when we are done, we don't really need to do anything else. When your slides are done and they filled out the information, it's going to be submitted. But you just want to go through and say, okay, maybe I want to change my background colors or not. If you want this to have a transparent background so that it just fits in with the page that you've inserted this on, it doesn't have any box behind it, you're going to take this and you're going to drag it all the way down. That's called opacity. So we're going to make it 
no opacity. Font color, you can change that here by clicking that, picking it, and then you click the color again. Then border, if I don't want these to have a border, you can see how, you know, I've got a big border, you know, I've got no border. I often like to have no background color with no opacity and no border, so it just feels really seamless on the page, but it's totally up to you. Corner radius, just the curve of the corner, and then the width, I usually leave that just as a default. So that is the way that you can go about creating custom surveys inside of high level. The sky is the limit in terms of what is possible. And these can be a great way to collect maybe a little bit more information than you would be able to with the form because someone can't see all of the questions that you're asking just yet. They have to answer them as they go. So people are a lot more likely sometimes to fill out more questions or give you more information in this specific format. And then the other benefit is that conditional logic. If you have any disqualifying questions, this can be a really great way to weed people out so that, you know, maybe you put this survey before your booking page and the only people who see the booking page are those that are not disqualified from this specific survey. So that can be a great option. But really, again, sky is the limit. It's totally up to you how you use them, how often and in what format. I hope this video was very helpful and you now feel fully equipped to create and use custom surveys through Go High Levels platform. I promise if you use these surveys in the right way, you will see much greater improvements in terms of quality of lead as well as segmentation of your existing list to improve the quality and the type of content that you are sending them in the future to be able to convert more of them into sales. Make sure you hit like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to this channel to get more high level tutorials just like this one, and make sure to drop a comment if you have any questions. If you're interested in getting my personal mentoring or coaching on things like online marketing systems, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, any other type of paid ads platform, as well as simply growing your business in this digital era that we're living in, click the link in the description and apply to work with me and my team by simply booking a call. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.